OK, this is the 2006 ALOA map, and this map uh, was used to test students on whether they understand the suitability of locations to do with landfill sites. Um, you've got a, a copy of this map on page 23 of your, book, for your booklets. It's probably in black and white, so please take some notes um, as we go through um, to these different locations so that you can answer the questions on page 24. Before we go on to the individual locations, I want to pick out and show you some features that you can see on this sort of uh, large scale map. Um, one of the first things that you can see, you've got um, these sort of rock, rocks towards the north up here. Um, all these rocks towards the north are all igneous rocks and they're separated from all the rocks towards the south by this feature here, which is the occult fault. And the occult fault runs in a sort of an east-west-ish uh, trend, um, and it is a big normal fault. I'll show you on a cross-section why that is the case. The, these rocks up here are the oldest, they're uh, Devonian age, and everything towards the south of the occult fault are all carboniferous in age. Um, what else can you see on this particular map? Well, can you see these big white patches towards the south, this thing that snakes um, in the bottom left hand corner? We've got this thing down here. They're all water bodies. Um, it's coloured in white or left white because we don't know what the geology is underneath it. And that's just a convention that all geology maps have. Um, what else can you spot? Well, can you see um, in this sort of uh, area towards the south of the Occult Fault? We've got these sort of weird um, sort of half moon shapes um, and we've got sort of a similar sort of, sort of structure just to the south of that particular map. Um, that thing there is a fold that has been faulted um, several times. Now, how do I know that there's a fault there? Well, if we go a little bit closer um, towards the the, the dip arrows, all those ones there are pointing towards the centre uh, of this particular structure. And there's one on this side which is pointing towards the south. So they're pointing towards each other, which indicates to me that that is a sin form. So the APT, the, the uh, sin form would be there. In fact, if you looked at the key, the rock which is in the centre is a, the youngest rock, so it is a syncline. So there's a syncline APT and the rocks are um, tilted towards um, the centre of that particular fold. And we get in this weird sort of half moon sort of shapes repeating of this sort of uh, dark grey, light grey, dark grey, light grey, because the southern limb of that fold has been faulted. Um, if I go on to the next page, um, this is a, light, a cross section going from north to south. So E is the um, northern side and Y is towards the south. Um, here's the occult fault. We've got older rocks here. We've got younger rocks on this side. Uh, younger rocks are on the downthrown side. There's your foot wall. And there's your um, hanging wall. I don't know why I put W should be in H. Anyway. Um, so we've got a normal fault. We've got uh, the oldest igneous rocks up here. We've got younger carboniferous sedimentary rocks towards the south. Um, the syncline that I mentioned, you can quite clearly see that it's there uh, with the youngest rock in the centre and the oldest rocks over here. And this southern limb has been faulted. So this side's gone down, this side's gone up. So we've got a series of normal faults which have chopped up that southern limb. OK, so we're going to go through each of the three locations now. I'm uh, going to pick out some of the features that you can see now. It's going to be easier doing this on the PowerPoint than in your booklet because you've got this in colour. F is in the bottom left hand corner. Um, F is situated in blue rock, which is the upper limestone group. So you've got a series of limestones and um, siltstones and sandstones and things like that. But it's mainly limestone. So is the limestone a good rock to put an acidic leachate and trap an acidic leachate in if it did affect the landfill site itself? 
that's up to you. Um, let's just say that a limestone is highly fractured um, and it's often uh, found as a sort of an aquifer rock. That might give you a clue. The other thing to notice is the rocks are tilted towards the sort of northeast. So when you see that from the um, symbol there, so which way of the water go if, um, sorry, the leachate go if it escaped landfall site? Hmm, what does it hit? Um, other things to consider on this particular one, just to the south, we've got this thing here. And that thing there is a fault. If you've got a fault there, you've got more fractures. If you've got more fractures, then you've got um, really high secondary permeability. Is that a good thing to have for a landfill site itself? OK, so the next site is location G. This is right close to the occult fault. And there's the occult fault up there. And then when that fault moved, you probably created fractures within the rock. So the rock that's directly to the south may be slightly more fractured than what it would if the fault, um, fault was there. So location G is in the upper coal measures. And the upper coal measures consists of um, sandstones, siltstones, mudstones, uh, and coal measures. So coal seams and things like that. Um, those rocks tend to be more impermeable than permeable because they will have been cemented. So is that a good thing to have um, a landfill site in? The other thing to notice, which I showed you previously, is this area here, we've got a sink line. So you've got a basinal structure like that. So if the leachate escaped, where's it going to go? Is it going to go um, further down into an aquifer? Is it going to get be able to get out of that um, sinful shape to somewhere else? You decide. The other thing to sort of consider, which might be a negative, this area, these thick black lines that you've got down there. There's got um, two feet, five feet, nine foot. These are all um, coal seams. Um, and coal seams are likely to be mined out in that particular area. And if you mine things out, in fact, there's a symbol there that says there's a mine, that you could have subsidence associated with it. So the ground could sink very suddenly. Is that a good thing to have for a landfill site? Final location is location E, so a dot there. Um, it's to the north of the Occal Fault. So there's the Occal Fault. Um, is in rock H. If we go to the key, which I don't think I put on yours, right at the bottom, it's diorite. And diorite is an igneous rock. It's an intermediate, coarse grained, crystalline rock. Likely to have cooling joints in, as that um, magma cooled down and contracted. And the reason I say it's a magma, um, it's discordant, it's blobby, sort of looking on the map, so it's going to be like a pluton. Um, sort of structure. So is that cooled and contracted? You're going to get some sort of um, permeability with it. Um, the other thing to note is that you've got a really steep slope. So if you look in this area here, you've got very close contour lines, which will suggest that you've got a steep slope. If you've got a steep slope, then the runoff from surface uh, water is going to be really high. So you might get water going into your landfill site. Is that a good thing to mix with leachate that forms at the bottom of, of your landfill site? Might be slightly problematic. OK, so your job is to go through on page 24 and decide what the positives and negatives are for each of those different locations and decide which is the best site for the landfill. OK, and um, you've got three marks for each each thing so it's got to be developed rather than just stating some facts <laughs>